everyone. Welcome to Annex School. Uh, today is a special day because I have a dental lab industry twin out there. We don't look much alike, but Peng Lore, who owns a lab in Minnesota called Dental Aesthetics by Lore. It, we were born on the same day. We found out last year exactly the same day and time. We both turned 40 today. So happy birthday to us. And we decided to ring in our 40th birthday going over something that I've heavily relied on Peng to teach for the last nine years. And that is how to inject beautiful, aesthetic, full arch prototypes quickly. So we all know that a few years ago, CAD CAM milling of PMMA blanks became like the standard. So if you've got a full arch implant case, what do you do? If you're designing it virtually, you mill it out in PMMA and you test it. But what if you have an approved physical try-in and you want to duplicate that in PMMA rather than scan it and then mill it and then do all the post finishing, like recreating all the texture in your beautiful approved wax up and all the contours. What if you could just take that approved wax up, put it in a flask with silicone putty and inject exactly what you put in is what you get out. So that's what you can do with the Annex Form Flask and the new Outline PMMA. So I've invited Peng on today to show you how he does that. And this is not an exaggeration. You can go from start to finish with your approved wax up in the flask, injected out of the pressure pot in about 60 minutes, which is a lot faster than scanning, milling, and all the post milling work you have to do. So without further ado, welcome to Annex. Hey, Peng. Hey. Happy oh, birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. So like we start every episode with a little something to take the edge off. So we really give all our secrets <laughs> out, right? But today's a special day. So in your box of things that you needed to do this, mm -hmm. what yep. was in there, Peng? What was in there? From Annex. Yes. So it's my favorite. So I would like to toast you, Peng, and me on this sixth episode of Annex School, our very special 40th birthday. Cheers. Oh, you were, I was prepared, man. Sorry. <laughs> Ready? Cheers. Happy Cheers. birthday, man. Happy birthday. Um, it's a good way to start the day, right? Yep. Not it's Okay, so let's get rolling. So what we're going to do today, you and I had kind of planned out how this could be really effective if you know, we're, it's going to take you about 15 to 20 minutes to go over each slide in your presentation to show your um, protocol. Yep. And it happens to be the same amount of time it takes for new outline to set up in a pressure pot, about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. yep. So we thought that it would be really cool if after just going over a few questions that I have for you, you can well, inject a prototype, a full arch live, and absolutely. then it'll be sitting in the, proto in the pressure pot while we're going over your steps. So yep. guys, don't worry, we will go over all the steps that he uses to set up the case, to mix the material properly, to inject it. We'll go over all of his steps in detail, but um, you are going to inject uh, a prototype and we'll actually get to see what you did live at the yeah. end of your presentation. So before we get started, you own a lab in um, Twin Cities. Yep. And you specialize, um, well, you often do these full arch cases. This isn't something that's new to you. You've been doing them a while. Yeah. Can you kind of walk us through, I know every case is different. Mm -hmm. but in your ideal case, what does that look like? Your workflow from start to finish with the dentist for a full arch implant bridge? It's a good question. <laughs> it's different every time, right? It, it is. It, it absolutely is. Because um, every case is so different. And it depends on what what type of material you're going to use. Sure. Um, you know, how much clearance do you have? Ver how much vertical? All that. What type of restorations? What makes sense? Are you opposing a denture, nat natural dentition? So every case is different. So when you um, provisionalize a case, mm -hmm. 
How often are you starting from an approved physical try-in that you're going to scan or duplicate? Like how often is that a step? Or are you ever going from a virtual design in your computer directly to a try a, a milled prototype? Uh, for me right now, it's about half and half. Okay. So I, I redo a lot of other cases. So those already have been verified. Oh, sure. We, we have like a starting template. Um, but the ones that I walk them through, um, they can be, you know, they, I can be dinking around with denture conversions for two years even <laughs> before we get something, you know, approved. So sure. it's, it just depends. Okay. So, I mean, and I want to get this straight. Mm -hmm. to everybody, I'm not saying that milling PMMA is something you shouldn't do. Of course, it's a wonderful tool. If you're going from a virtual design, the, it would be silly to mill it out of something else and then duplicate in the, in the flask. That's not what we're talking about here. So in those cases where you have that approved try-in, that physical approved try-in, um, and you're going to now create a provisional, if you were to do that digitally, you would mm -hmm. scan it. Yep. You would mill it. From the time you scan it to the time you're getting it off the mill, what amount of time would that take? You lose a day easily. Okay, a day. I mean, if you're, if you're 3D printing, so I I have a mill and I have a 3D printer. Um, you can definitely, especially with the Asiga, uh, it prints fast. So you can definitely use that as, as another tool. Sure. Um, so sure. it's sped up the process a lot, but I mean, you're still losing time, you know, printing it, you know, curing it and all that, just cleaning it up. So um, still a lot of dinking around. Yeah. So you'd be looking at finishing it the following day rather than finishing it that day. So that's Absolutely. really a pretty big deal. It is. So if you've got that approved um, try-in mm -hmm. rather than scanning it, what I, what I always love to hear people call the flask system, the annex form system. And if you're not familiar with the annex form system, don't worry. It'll all make a lot of sense um, after you're watching your live demo in a few minutes. But um, it's almost they, people call it putty CAD cam. So when you're scanning something, you're recording all the dimensions accurately and you're storing it in a way that you can access over and over again. With the Annex Form system, you're doing that in silicone. So the silicone is capturing all the detail, all the texture, better than a scanner could, right? And then the flask is key because it always locates the matrix exactly in the same place every single time. And we're talking about metal stops, not rubber bands that can do whatever, you know, from time to time. So um, I think what a lot of people don't realize is scanning it isn't the only way to record that data where you can access it accurately over and over again. The flask can do the same. So um, what I I know that why mill, why inject? To me, it seems, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems pretty simple. If you've got an approved try-in that's in your hand, mm -hmm. it'll be hard to justify scanning it and milling it, honestly. And I think that'll make sense to everybody after they, they watch this process. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, especially if you're just making little tweaks and things like that. I mean, what, why do you want to kick it back to the scanning department and then have somebody else virtually adjust it the way you you know you think it's supposed to be adjusted? Yeah. When you could do it yourself, and it'd be a lot faster. You have full control of it. So um, right. that part's my go-to. And, and again, yeah, I do everything from start to finish, besides the models and stuff like that. But you know, when I'm trying to save time, um, this is this is the way this to go. The way to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you want to get right into it sure. and inject yep. your case? So we're going to mix yeah. up the materials and um, inject the case. Yep, and we can just keep keep talking, you know. Um, yeah, as you're going, you want to angle your camera down a little bit so they can see what you're doing? Sure. So you're using the Annex Form Flask, and the Annex Form Flask system comes with special formulated silicones that... Um, Ooh, look at that. It's looking good. So that's new outline acrylic. You know what? I'm going to make you, let's see. I'm just going to zoom in on you, Peng. Okay. So they can really see. So Peng's not weighing anything. And this is the funniest, this is the most American nuance that I've seen in bringing German products to America. The German technicians that came here in the beginning to, to teach us how to do this 
were just in shock that we would not measure everything with a scale. <laughs> You're not measuring with a scale because you've done this so many times, you know what viscosity and consistency you're looking for. But in the beginning, you can absolutely use a digital scale. And would you recommend that in the beginning if somebody's new to uh, it? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And the ratio for new outline powder to liquid is two to one. Now, do you mix the dentin and enamel powders together and shoot it all in one layer? Or are you layering? Are you injecting dentin, cutting back, and then putting it back in, back in the flask and injecting enamel. Which way I, do you do it? I am not. I'm just doing straight uh, straight dentin. Okay. And sometimes I'll mix in different transpas and stuff. It just depends. Do you feel like you get a true shade, uh, a true shade tab shade, whenever you just shoot the dentin? Um, you know, um, for my answers, it depends on how what my thickness is. Okay. Uh, labiolingually. That kind of dictates a lot of of how how much transpo or maybe even high value, okay, um, stuff um, powder that I add to it. So it kind of yeah, again, it just kind of depends. Okay, what are you doing there? Why do you put that on top of your mixing bowl? I am just letting it kind of rest for a second. So you don't pour it directly into the syringe; you let it rest in the bowl. Yeah. Yep. I'll be pouring it in a second here, but. Oh, I think consistency right now, it's still a little bit runnier than I'd like. Okay. okay. So I'm just gonna give it a, give it a minute or so. And, okay, that's what I've heard is more like a minute to a minute and a half. You let it set up, yep. and I know that that helps eliminate or not eliminate, but it it minimizes bubbles and a lot of the shrinkage that happens. Now, new yep. outline, the shrinkage of new outline compared to like the shrinkage of a jet acrylic. Yeah is night and day. So if yep. you ever use new outline guys, like it's a different ball game completely. A absolutely. I, um, for the longest time, my, my cheap ass used to inject uh, jet acrylic. And then, um, I want to say it was about three years ago. Yeah. Um, Casey, yeah. You and Casey had asked me to, to fabricate the models and I, I inject the new outline. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I, I can't, I, for the life of life. You told me, yeah. you told me you were like, I forgot how beautiful this is. But yeah. the truth was you'd stop using it. <laughs> I did. Yep. You know, I have a whole freaking kit and like, yeah, I just stopped using it for whatever reason. Like, well, I mean, it is, it's expensive. It's like double the price of jet, but yeah. the shrinkage is almost not non-existent and whatever shrinkage it's going to do, it's going to happen in that little mixing bowl. Usually it yep. seems like. Okay. So you let it rest for a minute and then you pour it into the syringe. So show wow. us how you pour that into the syringe. Yes. I'm going to highlight you again. Okay. And guys, as we go along, if you have questions, please post them in the comments of the YouTube live stream or the Facebook live stream. And I can pull those up for Ping to answer. So here you've probably kind of got your, yeah. Okay. I see why you let it set up in the bowl because when you let it set up in the syringe, it's a lot easier to capture bubbles as you're pouring it. Right. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. And then you're not using a special syringe. This is just a typical syringe with a disposable tip on it. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, if you were to have injected it when it was all runny. Uh, I do find that I get more shrinkage. Okay. Before. Because a lot of that shrinkage is happening as it's polymerizing, right? So Correct. you let that happen in the bowl instead of in the syringe or the flask, more importantly. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to inject this. This this is this is just the top part of the flask because I okay. need I need a whole entire flask to continue. Okay. So just pretend this is the whole entire flask. <laughs> okay. Right now, it's just the. Yep, it's the just rubber bands, but typically the whole flask would be um, everything would be bolted down with with metal fasteners. So there's no way that you can tighten it more than you did last time. These are metal, you know, free moving metal stops. So. Correct. So in this case, because you needed the flask to demonstrate, yep, 
you uh, didn't do that. But typically, just guys, to be clear, you would have it in the whole flask. And again, we're going to go over every single step of this as soon as he throws that in the pressure pot. So you're you're injecting pretty slow. Oh. You may have bottomed out on the model. I think I did. What I love, somebody asked me like, aren't you nervous because so many things can go wrong with the flask and you're doing it live? There is literally nothing that can go wrong with this flask where you have to start back from the beginning. Now, one thing we didn't show them, Ping, is you're injecting, are you injecting right now on the ti the titanium cylinders, the temp cylinders? I am, yep. Okay, so if you were to mill this, you'd have the additional step of cementing the tie bases in. And we all know that that bond between the PMMA and the tie base, uh, the cement can be vulnerable with the, oh, there you go. With the annex form flask, you just mount your model in there with the trimmed and opaque uh, tie cylinders and inject directly to it. There's no step later. Yeah, and that's what it should look like. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna zoom in on you. Yep, and so I probably, it probably set up a little bit more than I'd like. Yeah, but, but you, that's perfect. Yeah. It should look like a piece of spaghetti coming out the other end. It shouldn't look like a pool. Yep. That's well, awesome. I'm, I'm gonna toss this in the, Pressure pot real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So with the new outline, whatever goes in the flask comes out because you don't have so much shrinkage throughout the polymerization process. And injecting it really thick like that at the point where the polymerization had already gone through the shrinkage phase. <sighs> There's not going to be an adjustment of the bite. Um, there shouldn't be any voids. There shouldn't be any bubbles. So what you just saw him do, even though it's a little bit um, difficult, you, I could see it was requiring quite a bit of strength for you to inject. Yeah, I, we were like, yapping a little too much. Hey, got a question Yeah. from Mark Chan. Hey, Mark. Uh, what temperature is your pressure pot? And let's talk about uh, we may talk about that in your presentation, but what temperature do you shoot for on the pressure pot with the water? Gosh, you know, because I'm I'm not doing it as more of like a final prosthesis. Uh, I I basically just put in hot water yeah. as, as hot as I can get it. And then I just blast the steamer in there for, a, you know, almost a minute or something just to get it hot. I don't have it regulated. I know Eugene is going to kill me for saying that, but <laughs> I've been picking his brain forever. And it's like, yeah, okay, this temp, that temp. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, all right, all right yep, I'm going to do that. And I haven't. So, <laughs> Eugene, I'm sorry, bro. I just, it's my waste of knowledge, man. Trust me, I, I know what you're talking about, but I just haven't. I'm a Crown and Bridge guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, and you're right. And uh, Mark's laughing at you, by the way. <laughs> Venturis is laughing at you. So um, it is eleven eighteen right now our time. So mm -hmm. you put the you put it in at eleven eighteen. So we've got about fifteen or twenty minutes to go through your slides. If you want to show everybody how it's done in detail, and as yeah. we go, guys. Oh, and Mark also says get a Drev pot. <laughs> Those things aren't cheap, Mark. <laughs> I I custom made mine. I think it was Eugene approved. So we, oh, there you go. Of course it is. The MacGyver of the dental lab world is Eugene. Yep. <laughs> he loves it. Okay, so I've pulled uh, in your presentation to the show. Yep. If you want to take us through your um, process, that'd be <sighs> awesome. Sure. So again, my, my biggest deal with, with the CAD CAM stuff is, you know, the, the mill can only do so much. I mean, it comes out of the mill and, you know, look at all, all these little stride burr marks and things like that. Yeah, you just have to clean up it so much. And so mm -hmm. once you get that cleaned up and you send it in, it gets approved. And then you come back and, you, you again, you send it back to the CAD CAM guy to scan it and reproduce it. This is exactly what you're going to get again. So, um uh, th that worries me a little bit when you're tr trying to go for something that that is more um, more pr precise. Yeah. Um, and also, besides that, um, on some of these, when when you're still in the prototype phase, like say you you need more extra strength, um, 
the only way you're going to be able to put in like a fiber, a fiber, um, true, you know, for strength. I mean, you can't, you can't mill that in. I mean, yeah, you can mill it and then grind in the lingual or something, but it's just not the same. So, um, that's what I kind of like about still injecting. So it gives you all that flexibility where when you are committed to milling, you kind of tell yourself that's not an option anymore, right? Yeah. So this yeah. really gives all the options to you. That's a really good point. Yeah. So I yeah. know we're showing pictures of an anterior bridge, but the same thing, the same steps apply, whether you're doing a small bridge or full arch. Um, any of the steps you're going to show here are identical, right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And so again, you know, with, with mill, these embrasures, I would love to open these up more. The CAD can, you just, it just can't. Yeah. So if you're going to go through and clean all that up, then it, you send it out and you're hoping that you're going to be able to re reproduce that final. Yeah. In a similar fashion. But like I said, you know, you send it to get it scanned again and it's, you're right back with all the funky burr marks. You lose control. So all your anatomy is gone again. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is just um, showing you how I cleaned up that one milled. Okay. Milled bridge. So you took the time to really put your texture that you wanted and and get your contours exactly how you wanted before you duplicated mm -hmm. it. In case. Okay. Yeah. And this is also one thing that kind of bugs me is like, you know, you create these and you put it on the articulator and like all the function is still not there. You still got to play around and get your incisal, you know, bevels all done correctly. Your, your canine guidance, you still got to play around with all that to correct it. And you can't, again, you can't fix it. You can't do that in CAD CAM virtually. Yeah, true. Um, So the first thing you're going to do then is capture all that texture with a layer of the high definition putty, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So be before I even get to the putty part, I've already cleaned up this bridge. I'm waxing any kind of undercut so that when I put the form 60 over it, it doesn't pull, try to pull it off. It's just a pain. And so do, you, do you have to also put like a divorce separator on that silicone tissue model? Yep. So it doesn't stick. Okay. Yep. So okay, you just use separator. Okay. Yep. But yeah, you're right. That sealing step is important. Just to yeah. It. Yep. Okay. I've I've made many mistakes. Um, more so when I had it in wax, and I had it on like the the what even if it's a tie base or a temp cylinder or something, it just rips it off and breaks it, and you're starting from scratch again. Oh sure. So that's why I started you know, waxing the little undercuts and stuff just to make sure it doesn't pull my restoration off. That makes sense. You're just blocking it out. And then you blocked out the um, screw channels with putty, it looks like? Yes. Yep. Okay. Do you ever yep. use wax? I do use wax. Yep. I On this one, I'm not sure why I use putty. I think I just had putty in my hands and I was like, eh, yeah, whatever. We'll plug up the hole. Is there an but advantage I, to using the wax? You know, what I found is that if I just use the wax and just cover the head of, of the screw channel mm -hmm. of the chimney, um, and then I impression, what, when I impression with the Form 60, what ends up happening is it fills in this hole. Yeah. And then it actually gives me a guide to, you know, to drill, to, you that know, makes cut sense. into it. So like, you're just isolating the screw head with wax, and then yes. your matrix Form 60 is filling in the screw channel up until mm -hmm. that isolated screw head. And so it's forming your screw channel for you. You don't have to cut it later. Correct. Oh, that makes so right. much sense. It okay. Gives me, yeah, like it gives me that guide and I just go straight down. And uh, I usually use red wax. So it's just like- It, it would show through. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's a really then, good idea. Yeah. And then when you steam it, it just pops, you know, I mean, it just absolves and- You're not like little, digging a little putty out or anything. Yeah. Yep. The putty stuff, it gets stuck in there and you're kind of screwed, you know. Yeah. I've used Teflon before too, and you're trying to blast it out, and it's just like steam it out, and it's just it's a it's a nightmare. So I've gone. Hey, I've by, gone the way, by the way, I can see the comments that people are placing, and uh -huh. you can't, and so I'm really selfish right now because we've got a lot of happy birthdays. <laughs> Dawn just posted happy happy birthday to two of the coolest kids I know. We're <laughs> cool, <thing. laughs> thank you, Dawn. Thanks, Dawn. Okay, sorry. I just wanted you to know you're getting a lot of birthday love. <laughs> 
I learned something new already. So I, that makes so much more sense now to use wax. There are a lot of advantages. Yeah. And again, I use the red just because it, it's, it's high contrast from, you know, the Denton color. It's easy mm -hmm. to find. Yeah. Um, makes sense. And I just use a minimal amount. So if I have to grind around it to get rid of that, because some of the red colors, like it just embeds in the PMMA. So I, I use a minimal amount where it just covers the screw head. And then if, if I have to ground around it a little bit more to get the excess off, then by the time you're done, it doesn't have that red residue anymore. Yeah, so that makes so much the, Yeah, it's inside the chimney anyway. So like nobody's ever gonna see it, but you know, we're just anal. So I just wanna make sure that there, none of that comes through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, and I, this is the last time I'm gonna interrupt you before the next step, but yeah. I have to pull this birthday wish up because this guy, hold on. <laughs> This guy introduced us. Yes. Uh, I remember back in like 2012, he was like, hey, my friend is going yeah. to call you. He needs some stuff. He needs some <laughs> help. And that's how I met you. So Josh introduced us. Thank you, Josh. Absolutely. Yep. Love Josh. And I'm not sure which one of us is the badass bitch. I'm going to say it's you because I'm not. <laughs> I'm a badass female. But I think he's calling you the bitch. Yeah, I can be a bitch sometimes. <laughs> no, you can't. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, sorry. Go on. Thank you, Josh. Yep. And then the flask. Okay. And the little washers on the side, for people who aren't familiar with it, those spacers mm -hmm. um, are interchangeable, removable. That's three pieces where yeah. you see those lines. That's not one, like thing with grooves on it. That's three different washer sizes. Yep. Perfect. And now we see why you didn't use the flask base. Yes. In yep. your injection. So yep. you needed it to show us. Okay. So you're looking to get that top washer about even or just a little higher than the teeth, the inside um, of it? I, I want the teeth um, as much inside the metal part as possible. Okay. On this one, I think I did drop it down after I took the photo, but okay. I just wanted to show, give you a reference. Okay. And you're stabilizing the model in the flask base using putty, right? I know you using can putty. pour yep. like, we have the little base formers where you can pour a stone base that a split cast that fits precisely into those grooves right. on the flask base, but the yep. base plate comes off and you can just put putty down there and yep. stick your model in it and make a little lip. And I, that's what I see most people doing. Is that what yep. you always do? Yep. yep. Okay. When I do when I do the hands on a second here, mm -hmm. I, I, will, I will show you why I do that. Okay. It, for me, it's just a pain to pour up a base and all that. And so the putty is just much faster. And I think I think you can you can move a lot quicker with that. Yeah. And then and that, that little that little washer of putty pops in and out of the flask as much as you need to. So you can just it travels along with the case the rest of the right. time. Okay. Yep. Got it. And then you are lining up the arch in that opening from the lid. Yep. Okay. If you get it to if if it's not centered, if that if the arch, if the incisal edge isn't kind of centered in that opening of the lid you can get into trouble with clearance, right? Correct. Or just the putty being too thin. Yep, the putty gets thin um, and then it expands. It's a little elongated and stuff. So that, that's why you want to keep it within that metal. I mean, the whole purpose of having that metal shell is to, um, to you know- Stabilize the adequate matrix. So you're using before, like we talked about putting the putty down in the flask base and pushing the model down into it. Before you do that, you better have that lid handy so you can yeah. use the lid to make sure that you've pushed it down into the putty in the right location and it's not one way or another too far yep. forward or backwards. Okay. Yep. Got it. But the cool thing is if you screw up, who cares? Like, just do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Mix up some putty and do it again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a ring breaking in the furnace. Like, you don't have to start from scratch. It's not yep. that big of a deal. Okay. Yep. And so this is the Form 60. And again, it's just a one-to-one -one mix. So I, I put that on first, form it on really nicely. Take your time on this, because this is the this is the big deal, because this is where you're trying to capture all that detail. And, and you're you sealing, you make sure that that 60 covers all yep. of the wax if you're sealing that, okay. Yep, yep. So you want to adapt it, you know, pretty, from where that, that tube structure is that, that I want to inject into, I'll, I'll go beyond that even sometimes. You know, if I'm mixing some form six, it's not going to hurt to to just go around the whole entire arch. 
That's right. I know some guys are like, well, you know, you just got to go around the area that you want to capture. But, you know, I'm, I'm a little anal. I don't want that that transition with a 70 and that 60. So it's like if it's all tooth, let's just. Man, I'm all for that. Use all that 60. Use it. Yeah, I know I know 60 is expensive. But again, the last the last thing you want is that transition from the 60 to the 70. And then all of a sudden you have these ear pockets. Oh, yeah. And then, and then you got to like. It's just a, it's a mess. So. Okay. That makes sense. And you're always making sure you've still got space for the 70. Yes. Yep. Okay. And oh, use the 70, you use the 70 under the model. Yes. In the base. Okay. Yep. Yep. So yeah, like down here, you can see that, that that's what I did. I, I used that to set the, to, to set the base. Have you used other um, putties? I know you have. Don't lie. Have you used other no. putties in the flat? Never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm it was such a bad experience. You can't talk about it. I get it. Yeah. Yes, I, I do. Sometimes I, um, you, you know, because it's just, it's just to hold the model. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you could even see an advantage maybe of having a 95 shore that's holding the model in place. Yeah, I think I have like an 80 or 85. Yeah. Um, and I bought it by accident just using the, it's, it's, it's like a blue color. Yeah. And so it's, it's a little bit harder and I actually like that a little bit better to, to hold my model in place. Yeah. 70 still has a slight little play. And again, 70 is a little more expensive than the other stuff. So I hey, use that for while you're going over this. I just got a sample. Anextent made an 85 shore blue, and the I I haven't mixed it yet, so I'm gonna grab it. And while you're talking, I'm gonna mix it because uh, I'm really curious what color it's gonna be. It looks like black. I'll be right back. Okay. Yep. Just keep talking. Yep. Okay, keep going. I'm gonna be mixing. Right. See what look. <laughs> Yep. Like dark. Uh, yeah. Yep. I think mine is similar to that. The 85? A Matrix Form 85. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It smells like crayons too. It smells kind of good. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. So the 70, how much of it are you? You, you look like you mixed up one scoop each of the um, 60, the A yep. and the B. Yep. How much do you mix up of the 70 on a normal case? I would say two. Two so each of A and B, yeah. so four total scoops. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. I just want to make sure it fills it fills the cavity of the flat. Okay. So I mean, it should it should fill so, all the way to the surface. Let me ask you. I've seen a lot of people mix up the seventy, tear mm -hmm. it in half. Yep. Roll it into two sausages. Put yep. one sausage in the flask lid and put one directly on the Matrix Form sixty on the model, yes. and then squish them together. Do you do that? I do. Yep. Okay. I think that's important because I, I, before I tried it like that, yeah, I would constantly end up with like too much coming out the top uh -huh. and have to squish it down so that it came out of the bottom. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And the reason why I do it in two, in two, um, in like two, two pieces is I want to make sure that it adapts to the 70. Right. And then the other one, I just want to make sure that it fills that cavity. Right. I had a model, so I'm going to make a little matrix while you're talking. Yep. Ooh, this matrix form 85 is nice. Yeah. Once it sets, it's pretty, it's pretty sturdy, I bet. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then you're just cutting that Pull off. the excess off. Yep. Flush. Okay. Yep. Got it. And, and look, it, it pops good. right out. It pops right back in. It's always going to go in the same place. Yep. Now, I know you were talking about how you use different putties on the bottom to put to stabilize the model yes but i just want people to understand the the anextent putties they take all that aluminum oxide filler out of the putty which dries out putty and makes it brittle after you know a few days or weeks so they take all that out it is pure silicone so it's dimensionally stable for like years i mean i've got three-year-old matrices in our demo stuff that still pop right in the flask so just fyi worth it mm -hmm. it's not Absolutely. that much more expensive either i don't think no, no it's not it's not but it's better <laughs> it's good stuff i'll tell you that okay keep going yep and so this is just a putty matrix to to make sure that um everything's still um 
in line with your original? Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's a good idea. Yep. Oh, where'd you get those? I can't tell you it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Not a secret. Y'all can buy those from me anytime. <laughs> yep. So the matrix, the, the reason why I showed it just for a reference, and then it allows you to kind of check your, your temp cylinders to see where you have to cut the heights. Oh, um, perfect. That's easy. I'm sandblasting them. I had these kind of pop up a little bit towards the facial, so I, I shaved them in a little bit. Makes sense. And then this is the fiber. Oh, yeah. yeah. You use the, is it e-fiber from Preet or is it the GC stuff? I have both. Okay. I have both. Um, you know, they're pre pretty much the same. Okay. It's uh, e-glass. E-glass, so. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And this is the GC stuff. I just had it on hand, so I just grabbed it. It's called Everstick, right? Everstick, yep. Everstick, okay. Yep. And, and again, if you were to do, you, you couldn't do this in CAD CAM. No. If you had like a temporary like this and it just kept on breaking and the patient was pissed, this is why you would want to use this Everstick or... Yes. Or a piece of fiber just to reinforce it. Yeah. Again, checking it in your matrix to make sure it fits. Your access holes before injecting. Oh, and Mark, Mark, you're so helpful today. I'm not surprised. Yeah. You know how to do this really well. Sink of fiber force for the Canadians out there. Yep. Okay. So now we're about to the we're to the step now where we did the live injection a minute ago. Now we're to that step. And I noticed, okay, see how much better you've gotten at injecting ping? That's not what it should look like, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> it should it shouldn't be. It definitely shouldn't be that runny. Yeah. So that's why it's you got to play around with it a little bit to get a real nice consistency. When it's runny, it just shoots through so fast, and all of a sudden it pops up on the other side. The yeah. Other hole. So you definitely want it more like jelly, like like a thick like honey, like thick honey. Yes. Hey, yeah. really good question that I almost asked. Um, what do you use to hold the fiber to the cylinder? Just composite, float like a flowable. Do you like cure it in place? Yes. With the flowable composite. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Because you've already you've already sandblasted the the temp cylinder, or the tie base, whichever you use, and then so I mean that surface should be should be primed already, and all you're doing is you're just light carrying it on, and hopefully it just it should grab onto that surface. Yeah, because you just need it to stabilize while that acrylic flows in. After the yeah. acrylic flows in, it's all splinted together, so it's not moving. Exactly. But, yeah. Great I've done it before. Where What's that? I was saying thank you to Richard for a good question. Yeah, because I've done it before where, you know, you just use that um, that un, that polished surface. Mm -hmm. And then I injected and then I actually pushed it, popped it right off. Oh, ooh. So, yeah. So that's why I, I made it just a standard, just to sandblast everything and make sure there's a, a nice surface to grab onto. Now, speaking of things um, moving while you inject, mm -hmm. there's one thing I want to make sure everybody knows because it's happened to me when I was demoing this before. I do my best to try to demo it myself, but I never do as well as you guys do. Um, when you make the holes in the silicone to inject, you're using hand drills that come with the flask. And yeah. those drills are cutting wow. through, they're spiral drills, yes, that cut through the putty. And sometimes it can leave little pieces of putty sort of hanging there by a little thread. Mm -hmm. So make sure you look through each of those holes and um, clear out any of that with, by just remove, inserting and removing that drill a few times because you might end up in your uh, PMMA seeing a little piece of bright orange putty floating around and that's no good. You got to drill that out and, you know, yep. fill it back in with composite. So just FYI. Yep. I just take compressed air and blast it pretty good. Usually you get all the residue out. Okay. Yeah, definitely right at the lip areas there. Sometimes there is some just sitting around. So you okay, definitely want to. The verdict on the Matrix Form 85 is thumbs up. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Okay. And there's your hot water. Yep. Oh my gosh. 
Mark Chan says it's clean the <laughs> clean the bunny dingleberries. <laughs> Mark, that's gross. <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> okay. So your water level is important. Yeah. Can we go back there real quick? Yes. If the water were to go over the flask, if you submerge the flask in water and hot water touch those little buttons of acrylic or little worms of acrylic, that freezes that acrylic in place. So if there is shrinkage, it can't, the pressure can't push it down in to compensate. It's the same dynamic as the expensive like Ivo base and Ivo cap systems with constant yeah. pressure. It's yep. just a pressure pot. It's real simple. But if that water hits those, that can't go down into the hole, right? So it can't go down right. to compensate for shrinkage. So I see your water level is perfect. It's like surrounding it almost to the top, but not over the top. Yeah, I would say it's probably maybe about halfway. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much surrounding the area that has acrylic in it, basically, which is all that matters. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what it looks like after I pop off the uh, the the putty. The okay. Sofa. And it just comes right out of the putty. There's not a stone that you've got to clean from the surface. There's no mess after that. It's just super clean. And yep. I mean, the texture is all there. Yep. When I watched somebody, I was in a lab one day, and they were working and working and working on this full arch prototype that they'd milled. And I said, man, you've been working on that a long time. And, well, I just want to get the texture right. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you should inject this. <laughs> like, yeah. you wouldn't be doing any of this right now. You'd be polishing it and adding some pink composite, you know. And yeah. be done. Oh, that's yeah. great. There's hardly any flash at all. Yep, very minimal. Yeah. And honestly, if, if you would have injected that like you did today, where it was thick, you wouldn't have any. Yep. You wouldn't have any flash at all. I, I cannot wait to see this one come out of the pressure pot. That looks great. And the attachments are incorporated into, the abutments are incorporated into it. There's no step to cement them. Yep. Super easy. And then you've just done like OptiGlaze colors or something on the this surface? Is, this, I have actually am a bigger fan of the, uh, the luster paint. The light cure stains. But can yeah. you... Do you put those on and then you glaze over it? Um, you know, on this one, I think I did. Okay. I think I put down the luster paint first. L luster paint, to me, kind of acts more like the, the glazes that I use. Okay. That, that consistency um, is is more, is not so foreign for me. I, I know some guys have... Yeah, some guys have used the the Opti Glaze, and they're they're used to that consistency, and they they, they do fabulous stuff. I mean, like Miles Cone does some amazing stuff with yeah. Opti Glaze. Um, it's just yeah, it just doesn't work in my hands. But when that luster paint came out, I mean, that's it's different. Yeah. So um, I will use that to kind of color, do my mamelons and my incisal halos, and then um, yeah, I'll, I'll come back with a with an Opti Glaze coat. Just a, a varnish, just to seal everything. You can't use the um, luster paints as a as a final layer, external layer, can you? You have you to. Seal them. Oh, you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I like and stuff, but I just want to seal it and then come back and kind of hand polish things. Got it. Okay. Um, if I just leave the luster paint on top, I could possibly just polish it right off. Yeah. And so that kind of defeats the whole purpose. And then you know it's blotchy. If you kind of take that color off and you come back and try to add it back in it it doesn't look right so okay that, that's why i put that opti glaze layer over it and then hand polish it and hopefully i don't i don't take too much off okay got it yeah yeah it looks awesome did you opaque those abutments or did you go straight on to the abutments i did not i purposely did did not opaque them i just wanted to see how much how much the um the new outline can kind of cover it Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted a, a different visual reference, I guess. So now it makes sense to me, seeing how you characterize it and color it, it makes sense to me that you don't mix the enamels in because you're creating those effects externally. Yes. Um, but just for people watching, if you want, if you don't, if you want to do something a little faster and you don't want to put that work in at the end, 
we have like a little cheat sheet I've made over the years listening to different lectures. I think some of it was even from your information when you did mix enamels in. Um, if you want to do that, I have like ratios by weight that give you a kind of a guide on how much high value you should put with A1 and yada, yada. So if you want to just inject it and polish it and be done or glaze it and be done, then we have some guidance for you guys on that. Yep. And you got to be careful too, because uh, especially for, for this one, if, if you, um, you know, because you got these four ponics, you want to control that value. If you add in the transpa, then all of a sudden it gets a little translucent. And oh, sure, sure. Gray, you know, it grays out in the mouth. Okay. Yeah. And so for, for this one specifically, that's why I chose just to go straight and not, not mix any transplant in there. That makes sense. Yeah, it looks great. Oh, it looks so nice. I mean, the, part, yeah. The but, optics of new outline are so good. Yep. And again, th this is the reason why I go back into it rather than just just hand polishing whatever the the milled PMA version is. Right. And again, the new outline. Yeah, it's just it's a beautiful material. Like like I said, I'm I'm glad I I did those models that one year and and got back into the new outline because it's 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 an amazing material. Yeah. Good. Now Casey makes all our models in her little garage lab. I told yeah. her she's a technician now. It's like, just say yes. People ask her all the time. I was like, why not? Yep. You're a technician now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's beautiful. So, but yeah, that's basically it. And I will kind of start walking you through how I do it. Um, okay, so I'm dying. Can we take the one out of the pressure pot and just look at it? Sure. I'm really impatient. That's why I never could have been a technician. I'd pull everything out of the pressure pot too fast. I'd never let the putty set up all the way. <laughs> I just want to know what it looks like. Now, if there is a void, it's like, let's say that he had injected this case and it never came out the other side. So we know that he didn't mix up enough material. That didn't happen in this case. But if it did, you still throw it in the pressure pot anyway. You get it out. You see where the void is. And because it's a putty matrix, you literally just re-sprue the void and in close it back up and inject the void. So that's why in the beginning I said there's really no error you can make that makes you go all the way back to start. And then before before you unveil it, mm -hmm. I've got a question from Ben Mueller. Hey, Ben. What? What's the deciding factor to inject PMMA versus composite? Great question, because we have the same system with clear top, flask, clear silicone, and flowable composite that you can inject. So do you inject composite now? Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. Uh, the deciding factor is what, what phase I'm in. If I'm still just doing the prototypes, no reason to do the composite yet. Sure. Um, Composite's more of a final or really long-term provisional. Yep. Okay. And I wasn't really a big composite guy until um, until I, I met met uh, Robert Arvai. Okay. Oh, and then he knows. started explaining things, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you know, Robert. Yeah. Uh, He's the science of composite. Science, yeah. Um, Pull up the pub web on my on my iPhone and show you the statistics and, and chemical I, no. crazy crazy but um, it, it was a reality check but the one thing that really stuck in my mind uh, from the Pecton Summit was when he said you know the one material that dentists know very well is composites that's true that's, that's true that's they've got all the printers, they've got all the materials they need to maintain it to yeah. polish it yep. Yeah, that's true. It's a, good so it's a big, big thing in Europe and just repairability. Mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer. So um, whenever I can get away with it, I I have been doing some full arch composite restorations now. And injecting is way much faster. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, guys, next week, John McMillan is going to be our, or not next week, two weeks from now, next Annex School episode, John McMillan's going to go over composite injection. He's actually using it to strengthen and make more aesthetic 
3D printed restorations. So he cuts back the um, occlusal plane and the incisal edge yep. and replaces that printed material with the more wear resistant, durable composite. So it's pretty cool what he's doing with that too. Mm -hmm. And relining, he's doing relines with the denture based print material in the clear flask. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see this. It's the moment of truth. So you're popping off those little buttons. Boy, you did actually go through all the shrinkage in the little bowl and syringe because it is exactly what you put in there. It didn't suck any of it into the flask. Yep. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous. If you have flash, it's because you use rubber bands. I swear yeah. you're going to have flash. Yeah. So. You can see a yeah, little bit of flash right here. And that is because of the rubber band. But not... Not just because of that. This model isn't the original model. This was just my backup one so that I had the other one in case I needed to show show uh, specifics. Okay. So moment of truth. Dun, dun, dun. I need like the, um, is it Jeopardy? That has the little song. But this is the first time we've done like a true live demo. So I was, I next time I'm going to have the Jeopardy music. Oh, look at that. Hold on. I'm going to like highlight you so everybody can really see it. It's perfect. Look at that. Hey, not to mention that you, oh, you've got some bubbles. You've got some bubbles in approximately, but those are easy to take out. Yeah. And that may be because it wasn't all locked in place. I don't usually see that in the flask. No, that's my pour. And, and that's why, again, the Form 60, you got to take it slow and you got you to um, mold it just perfectly. Yeah. Otherwise, that's exactly what you're going to trap right in. So with the 60, did you, you didn't, did you put that in the pressure pot with the 60 on it? I did so, not. Okay. So... Guys, one really important thing is that when you do that 60 layer, get it on there, get it on there well, and then get it in a dry pressure pot at two bar. And it's going to push all of the interproximal areas in. It's going to push yep. all that air out. Yep. But I mean, yeah. really, that doesn't take long. And look at that. It's a perfect duplicate. Wow. Okay. All right. Good job, Bang. Pressure was on and you did it. Yeah. See, see what I mean about, you know, how those holes are kind of just embedded in there? Yeah. Now it's easy for me to just drill right down and, and uh, get to the get to my uh, tie bases or temp cylinders. Yeah, there's, no, there's no hunting around for it and messing up yep. your injection. Yep. Whereas before, you know, when I when I put the putty on top of it, then it was like it was, it was a guessing game. I'm looking at the I'm looking at this original and trying to guess where everything's at. Yeah. Because now it's like, yep, it's 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 almost built right in. You know what's funny is I know why you didn't use the base of the flask today. We talked about that. Yep. But what's funny is, you know, in real life, in the lab, what if you can't find, you can find the top of the flask and you can't find the bottom because somebody put it somewhere or it got something on it and somebody's cleaning it. That's real life. Like sometimes you got to make it work with what you got. And you even made it work <laughs> without yeah. having a flask. Yep. But I'm you what not to do. <laughs> Y'all don't try to just buy the top because I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So th this is what we were working with. Okay. Now, did you, we talked about opaquing or not opaquing the temp cylinders. Yep. And we can't see your face right now. You know that, but, um, yep. The temp cylinders, do you ever use, I know like A1 opaque, you got an A1 case, you use some A1 opaque on it and inject on the opaque um, abutment. Yep. Do you ever use pink opaque? I do. I do sometimes if like, um, if that particular tie, tie cylinder is a little bit deeper and it's more facial, then yes, sometimes I will. If I know it's gonna be right in that gingival range. Yeah. Okay. Or you could do both. You could put some pink where you yeah. need it and you could put some A1 where you need it. Do you prime after you light cure that opaque? Do you put any primer on it to bond with the PMMA or you just go straight on to that like sticky inhibition layer? Um, I do prime 
at least get that um get, you, you do want that layer off because I, I don't really know i don't really believe if it really if it you know pmma to to the composite yeah whether, whether it bonds very well face. i'm talking i'm like talking oh. to your scrubs i'm, I'm sorry I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get my putty ready so i can not screw this up this time with the the bubbles <laughs> no that's okay that's okay so you're gonna do it again you're gonna like do it from the putty and do it yeah. again yeah i'm gonna okay. i'm gonna show you just so if y'all if y'all tuned in late yeah there's no consequence today you get to see it yep because it, it's hard to you know just looking at slides to see what what i'm really talking about so yeah i wanted to show it Live. Mark, Mark has another question. Yes. Do you ever inject new outline to Chrome SLM for a long, long, long term temp? I have not. I have not. I think um, I'm just too cheap to. <laughs> you would just use the Everstick or the e fiber, something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you could. You it's absolutely like, could. Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely could. Um, it's just you, you spend all that time designing it in the CAD CAM, and then you're gonna you're gonna inject um, new outline over that. Then it's like, are you gonna retrieve it later? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then again, if you're if you're casting something r real cheap, real fast, I think it's fine. But if it's if it's closer to more of like your final, then for me, it's it's harder to justify going going the whole. The whole uh, nine yards on it. Okay. Again. 60. Okay, I'm gonna highlight you so they don't, they don't need to see me. They're gonna see you. Yep. Okay. Okay, so you use a lot of sixty. I gotta be honest. And as I, much as I'd love for everybody to use that much sixty, I've heard that a thinner layer of sixty really gets more detail because the pressure pot is more effective pushing that thinner putty layer where it needs to be. Yeah, I just have a lot of. A lot of area to cover. See okay. How I still have left. Okay. To push down on and. You sure do. Yeah, it's a bigger case than I realized. Yeah. So you go all the way around the facial surface, then you're going around the posterior and the lingual, and you're absolutely covering everything. Yep. Perfect. And if you had a silicone soft tissue model, you put separator on it because that silicone is going to stick to that soft tissue model if you don't. Yep. Okay. Dude, I'll never forget, like in the first year of Annex in North America, when I showed up at a lab that mm -hmm. wanted me to demo this. And I thought, I don't know why I thought they were going to do it because they're the technicians. I just brought the stuff and then they just all sat down and looked at me like, okay, do it. And I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I do that all the time. And I messed it up a lot, but we finished it before I left, you know? And then Mark, oh, Mark, I'm about to bring Mark into the show. <laughs> Mark says it's the divorce is the best silicone separator ever. <laughs> Great. Nice. Definitely. Okay. All right. So this is what we were talking about before? Yes. So when you take the base plate off the flask, that's what remains. So yeah, show them the base plate that comes on it. All the flasks come with that. Yep. And if you want to pour up your split cast, we have the formers for it, but those little screws come out and then you've got your key for your silicone. Got yep. it. All right. And you've made that in advance. So it pops right back in. There's no way it's going to pop in a different place than it was before. So that's really cool. And I see that um, if you'll hold it where we can see it from the top again, do y'all see where the space is around the rods in the back? When he made that, he had to make sure the spacers were on so that the spacers didn't um, get prevented from seating. Yeah. So you'll want to have your spacers on when you make that. Perfect. Okay. Oh man, I like this so much better. Last episode we did CAD CAM design and I have no clue how that works. And so I was clueless like the whole time. This is good, I know this. I love it. 
So now you would put your um, flask lid on and see if you've got appropriate clearance, right? Yep. And you do. Sometimes you might have too thick of the 60 and you could trim it to make room, right? Yeah. Let's see it from the top. Can you angle it? Yeah, to the top. Perfect. Yeah, you've got plenty of space. Okay, that's cool. You are so above and beyond. I did not know you were going to do the whole process for us again. Yeah, if, if you kind of just talk about it, then people kind of, they'll, 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 they'll lose track of where you're at sometimes. So. Yeah, that's I right. I find that the, to show the slides and then actually do it really helps a lot. Yeah. I'm going to say what Katie in our warehouse says to me all the time. You're so extra, Ping. You're so extra. <laughs> Only on our birthdays. We are so extra on our birthdays. And it's a Friday. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what the statistics, I don't know how that math works with leap years and all, but I guess you only have a Friday birthday every seven years, right? Yep. Maybe eight. So. Okay. This is the 70. Okay. It's a pretty good chunk, but that I want to make sure I have enough. Love it. And again, this, after putting that 60 on, it should have been sitting in the pressure pot for a bit. Mm -hmm. So we're skipping that step, but it you're should. Break, you're breaking rules today. Yeah, I am. And you've got about what, like three minutes working time, maybe yep. two and a half, something like that. I mean, enough. There's enough, enough working time. Okay, so you put that on first, like we were talking about. So you know that you're going to have full coverage and then you put the other half in the lid. Got it. This part always makes me know. Oh, you're off on the front. There you go. So you're kind of pushing it back in as you go. Yep. You want to fill the cavity of that flask. Get all the way down to your stops. Oh, that's so pretty. And you got to get all those, all three of those on. All the way. Nice work. Not bad for rookie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you lie. <laughs> okay, so now I can kind of see underneath the lid, I can see where you've got 60 that's kind of out. Yep. Naked. That's not good, right? Um... Yeah, you, you definitely want to cover it with, with as much 70 as you can. Mm -hmm. So it's not really something where you squish the lid down, put those washers on, and then just be done. There's a lot of, like, it's worth the time you put in to make sure that that putty is where it needs to be. Yeah. Got it. I don't know if you can see right up here. Where, yeah, where, I can. Yeah, I always try to make sure that this this is the most important part for me. Here, to angle it a little bit more this way. There we go. To make sure that this the 70 is inside Oh, right, right, right. Because this is this is where you don't want any expansion of your PMA. Okay. Down here isn't isn't so so bad. Got it. 
because I'll probably cut that back anyways and put tissue mm -hmm. and composite or something. So, but the teeth part, that representation is all inside this metal chamber flask. Got it. Got and that, it. That's what I want to make sure is, is definitely reinforced with, with putty. Got it. Okay. And then that's going to set up and you're going to trim it and we're going to make the sprue channels. They've seen you inject. So I think as long as we can get to the sprue channels yep. and just preparation of it, we're good. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I, it's funny because probably in 2012, when we first came out, we brought the mask to the States. Mm -hmm. the first time. Um, CAD CAM hadn't quite hit yet, really. So yeah. we were in business about a year. And then all of a sudden, I mean, New Outline was probably our, it was definitely our biggest product. Mm -hmm. And then CAD CAM discs really came out. Yep. And everything changed. And I think almost everyone who was injecting New Outline stopped. Mm hmm um, Dennis, we're still using it. Maybe I was selling it to Dennis, but labs largely just discontinued using it. Didn't use the flask very much anymore. Maybe the verticulator. That's a whole different episode. Uh -huh. But um, I would say about three years ago is when people started. I think CAD CAM had settled in enough. They were confident enough with it to say, OK, maybe there's this one situation where this actually doesn't make us faster, doesn't make us better. It's not more predictable than what we could just do with the old process. So yeah. it's funny. It's nice to watch like people come back around to something that worked well, you know, yeah. I mean, pouring it in. Oh, there's Javier, our, our triplet, our <laughs> birthday triplet. So Javier's birthday is also today. We love him so much. Happy birthday, Javi. I wanted him to come into the episode with us. But he's like, his family loves him so much. They planned some kind of special day for him. And so he's not available. But I'm so glad he dropped by to say happy birthday. We love you, Javi. Hey, he was an early user of the flask for sure. He was yeah. one of, he's one of the OGs. Yep. Okay. So with the putty probably now set up, yep. do you trim it first? And I then put your holes? Okay. Yep. You're just, you're like, just a razor. It's a straight razor, man. Yeah. You're like a renegade. Oh my God, I would cut myself so many ways. Ooh, that's making me nervous, Ping. Oh, why are you not using a knife? I know, I know. Oh my God, you're about to cut yourself. No, oh my God, fast. I don't think I can watch this part. You're making me so nervous. I'm going to send you a buffalo knife. I have a buffalo knife here. I, I you just enjoy the adrenaline from risking your skin to. <laughs> oh my god! Don't try this at home, folks. Well, I, I kind of just like this blade up against the edge. It just yeah. cuts really, really nice. That's that's why I use this, but. I get it. Oh my God, that, that really gave me anxiety. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we got. Yeah, Harvey had the right idea for his birthday. He's just chilling. I mean, I don't think he's going to the office. You and I were like, let's do annex school. And then we were here at eight, like getting everything ready. Yeah. <laughs> what were we thinking? I don't know. I think we, we got excited with that one, uh, that one picture. Remember, I we got point. excited about making the twins picture, and then like for some reason that made us think we would want to spend our birthdays like stressed out at annex school. <laughs> but it's almost done. Like we did, it. we've so far done okay, Ping. And after this, man, it's birthday time. Yep. Oh, that's great. Oh, Casey. Casey's an enabler, first of all. And Casey, Casey says, I got to take another shot when I get nervous. But what she doesn't understand is that I, like, I'm like i a two-shot girl. I got a, one shot's about all I can have in the day. 
<laughs> I got to pick my kids up after this, Casey. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's so nice. So again, yep. I'm just going to go right back there towards the most, just the lingual spot. Okay. So do you ever, I've seen people kind of build in like a little wax button be, behind the, like in the retro molar pad. Yeah. So if they have something to sprue to without messing up the anatomy, do you ever do that? Or do you just kind of go right into the most distal space? You know, if it's a functioning cusp and I'm going to have to grind that area in anyways, that's not a big deal to me. The only time I'll actually go back here, like like what you're you're saying, is if I'm like injecting the the pink. Yeah. And I need a big bulk of material to go through. Oh yeah, just to give yourself some space for the material. Yep. Okay, and it's pretty close to the border of the opening in the flask. That hole, is that okay? Um, it is because it's just going to be my my re my re relief hole. Okay, and I know you're not injecting in that hole. Okay, yeah, got I'm it. Actually inject and I saw that on that side, you held your index finger kind of to feel where you could feel the drill going. Yep. So that's just to make sure you're at a good location for injection. Got yep. it. And now y'all can see all those little shavings that came out. That's what you got to make sure nothing's stuck in there. And you're going to make a little reservoir, basically, right, for the excess material. Yes. Okay. That's where the pressure pot can take that excess material. It's got something to work with to push down in to compensate for shrinkage. That's awesome. And I can see now that the that the matrix is ah. off the model. I can see that um, the parts where the 60 is exposed are the parts that go beyond the border of the wax up. So those aren't parts that I would be all that nervous about, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. Again, my focus is making sure all this right here is good. It's captured. Yep. yep. And and in the the metal flask portion down here, I just I wasn't too worried about. No, that makes sense. Everything's yeah. stabilized. Yeah, and I think some of that sixty kind of just it, it throws your eye off just because I overextended it. Yeah. By using too, uh, a little bit more than than normal. Okay, so let's do this since they've already seen you inject. Mm -hmm. um, once we've worked pretty much to the point. Do you do, is there anything that you do between now and the injection that we need to go over or could we inject off air and I can just post uh, a picture. We can post a picture later in the comments on this live feed just to show people what it looks like. Sure. It's going to take 15 minutes to set up anyway. Yep. I was just, um, I was just going to find real quickly my driver and pop this bad boy off. And put okay. those uh, put those uh, those temp cylinders on. Okay. So you can see. Okay. Let me find that driver real quick. I think all the little parts and pieces are the hardest thing about the implant cases. Yeah. Especially the uh, tiny little multi-unit screws are not fun. No, nope. you better buy a couple 10 packs of those to keep around just in case. I can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a 10 pack in a yep. drawer. Emergency screws. So sometimes you opaque the tie bases or the temp cylinders. Sometimes you do not. You're using just dentin, so you're not having, you don't have a very translucent mix. You're building the, the illusion of the translucency with the luster paints after. Yes. So really, you probably don't have to opaque the temp cylinders often at all, do you? No. I mean, if you, if you look at how opaque this straight A1 is. It's not going to show anything. Yeah. Th this would be actually perfect for the cut bag. Yeah. Like what John is doing? Yeah. This would be perfect because then you're cutting, you know, basically the incisal half and then yes. a little bit more down towards the, the gingival. And I mean, if y'all want to get real crazy with it, you can cut back the dentin, put it back in the flask and inject the enamel. That's a little difficult 
to cut back in a way where you've got continuous channel for your enamel to flow across the whole area. So some people pour it in or lay it in with a spatula in the matrix first and then push the model in and then close the flask. You can do a second layer, but this is America and we usually don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it was a provisional, so, you know, yep. it's a lot of work. And on your pink, you're just, do you ever, I guess if you're duplicating an approved wax up, you're duplicating full contour gingiva and then you're cutting back the gingiva portion with a burr. Do you ever cut back the try-in? No, you couldn't, right? Do you ever cut back the try-in and duplicate a gingiva cutback version so you have space for the composite? Um... Not, not very often. Okay, so you're injecting full contour gingiva. Yep. And then you cut it back and you put your composite on. Yeah. Okay. Apologize, I'm struggling a little bit with this one. It's okay. It's hard to do this live, isn't it? It like yeah. makes, it makes you nervous yep. for no reason. Like it's our friends watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, Casey's right. Need that second shot. <laughs> you might. Okay. Yep. So I just wanted to show a little bit of the experimenting that I, I've been doing. And it's just whether to, um, yeah, I'll pick the cylinders. Okay. Then you've got one anodized. Anodize it. Okay. Or just keep it straight. Just keep it straight. Yeah. And let's say that you had one thin area mm -hmm. where one of the cylinders were. You could easily just opaque that one. Absolutely. If you wanted. Yep, absolutely. The yeah. only thing that I'm I'm a little careful about is you see how when you when you use a composite, it fills in those grooves. Oh, so now you don't have your reten mechanical retention. Exactly. Yep. So you just have to be careful about it. And that's why sometimes if I do any opaquing, I'll just do the most anterior ones where you're going to see it. Okay. And then the posterior ones, I'll just, I'll just go straight. But you could, even though, I mean, you've got that sticky layer, the inhibition layer on the opaque, but mm -hmm. you could easily just put some bond LC and cure that too, yep. to get a better bond between the, the opaquer and the new outline. Yep. Just to, like little insurance policy. Yep. Oh, step. Birthday <laughs> Hey, Step. And thank you, Step, uh, about my glasses. Thank you very much. I have a friend who's an optometrist, and she hooks me up, man. It's, fun. it's nice to have optometrist friends. Okay, so, Peng, uh -huh. thank you. You're welcome. Like, you were so generous. And y'all didn't see us all morning, but <laughs> Peng has been at this with me all morning. We had some technical issues when we tested everything out. So I cannot thank you enough for basically devoting half of your birthday to Annex School. It's all good. And um, you're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you were up at you were at the lab at like six this morning. So it's time for your birthday nap. Yep. Yep. I'm due for one. <laughs> I can tell you you can't. So thank you so much. I, I think. Nobody else has any questions. So you must have done a really good job explaining. Thank you so much. I hope so. Yeah. They can always uh, shoot us questions and stuff later too. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys are watching this after the live stream and you have questions, go ahead and post them. Uh, Pang and I will probably see it. And and after our birthday's over, maybe we might pay some. <laughs> <laughs> we'll respond next week. Pay some yeah. Next week. When we're really 40, we're just barely 40 now. When we're really 40 next week, we'll respond to your questions. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Um, I we have we have to do this again, just not on our birthdays. Let's do it on like a normal Friday. Sound yeah. good? Perfect. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks everybody for watching. And we will see you in two weeks for the next episode. Have a great weekend. Yep. See ya.